I keep on saying on this platform, and will not tire repeating, that there is nothing ideologically speaking which binds President Uru Kenyatta and William Samoy Ruto. President Uru Kenyatta is a prince. William Ruto is a hustler. So in 2013, these two individuals came together for the purposes of that general elections. And they came together because of the ICC. ICC is actually what was the, was the, 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 the bond between William Ruto and Uru Kenyatta. And after 2013 elections, these guys committed one of the gravest political mistakes. William Ruto, in his own wisdom, together with the President Ruru Kenyatta, decided to merge their two political parties. So URP and TNA marched together, and they formed a major political party called Jubilee. And at the back of my mind, I knew because of there's no ideological grounding between the two guys, I knew there was nowhere these two people were going. As we speak now, Jubilee Party is falling apart. And just like Moses Wetangula promised NASA principles, the divorce in Jubilee is imminent. But it's going to have casualties. It's going to be messy and it's going to be noisy. And it's just a matter of time. So today, I want us to look at this, this food in a Jubilee Party and why I strongly believe it has reached a boiling point and it's going to explode very soon. But before we go into the details, I want you to subscribe. Now, today, let's go directly into the real politics without going into the background. We all know President Uru Kenyatta over the weekend read the riot act on, on uh, William Ruto's allies from central Kenya. And it was shocking. Nobody expected President Uru Kenyatta to do that. As a matter of, of fact, for a very long time, most Kenyans have always viewed President Ruru Kenyatta as a coward. And they've always believed that William Ruto, there's a way William Ruto manipulates President Ruru Kenyatta, provoking him, and then President Ruru Kenyatta acts, and then later on the president pulls back. But this time, the president was not the usual cowardice president we know. The president was brave, and he faced these guys in the presence of William Samuel Ruto. So the question is, who is going to benefit out of all this? Because if you want to talk politics, we must remember that William Ruto was originally in uh, URP. And President Ruto Kenyatta was initially in TNA. And after the last election, during the last election, William Samuel Ruto, because he had a, a campaign, a general election coming up in 2017, I mean in 2022, he was very strategic and he ensured that in central he planted his people and these people are actually now proving to be handy at this time but they are doing this at the expense of president Uru Kenyatta. according to the rules of power you should not outsign your master so the deputy president has been proving to the president that he has support of the majority mps senators and probably governors from central province and that's actually the backyard of president Uru Kenyatta. even if president Uru Kenyatta was not going to be running as the president then he would be comfortable with that backyard fully behind him or he would be comfortable to control that backyard so that in any case because you know politics is always about betrayal in any case someone would attempt to interfere with him after mess up with him after he exits political scene then he'll have a background, a backyard which can fully do whatever he, he tells them. But this is not what is happening now. So the question is, what next? In my view, I strongly believe that Jubilee is going to collapse. And this collapse is coming soon. And who is likely to benefit from this collapse of Jubilee? In my view, I think both of them are going to lose. President Uru Kenyatta is going to lose. William Samoy Ruto is also going to lose. And as much as William Ruto now, if you talk of URP as a political party, he'll be, he'll, he shall have succeeded in expanding URP to several, I mean, to several parts of central Kenya. But President Uru Kenyatta is going to lose because now, by the mere fact that a few elements from his backyard 
can actually authoritatively talk at him. Like I remember yesterday, Ali Sohome was very clear that you know the president should apologize, and even the the, the like if a woman rep, they were guru something, and several of them, including Kimani Ngujiri. So the president is going to lose in that. But why is you are I mean why is Jubilee Party going to collapse? Why is William Samoy Ruto and uh, Uru Kenyatta likely to, to, to fall apart? In my view, the collapse is going to be caused because of the following reasons. Number one is what I call the pain of betrayal. When William Ruto entered into pact with the Jubilee, with Uru Kenyatta, they entered with that pact as a community. So there's the Kalenjin and there's the there is the Kalenjin and there is the Kikuyu community. And during that time, it was all about the ICC. They wanted to protect their sons. The Kalenjins wanted to protect William Samuel Ruto. And the Kikuyus wanted to protect their son, President Uhuru Mege Kenyatta. And they succeeded in doing that. And during that time, they also agreed to support one another. Ten years, Uhuru Kumi, Ruto Kumi. So the people around... William Ruto believes that the president is betraying that act. They are forgetting that politics is all about betrayal. You betray this guy, you betray another one, the other one get, betrays another one. So they forgot that. But this is what is now eating the Jubilee Party. This notion that President Uru Kenyatta is actually betraying William Samuel Ruto. And even if you study the politics William Ruto is, has been playing of late, he's playing that politics of victim. He's telling these guys, me, I stood with your guy. And he's been trying to be the most loyal deputy president Kenya has ever had. But now, for no reason, he's not coming out to support me openly. And I want to put a disclaimer. I've never had the president go against what he promised the deputy president. Because if you look at it keenly, you'll realize that the president has only said certain things. He doesn't want early campaigns. He has not said he won't stop the deputy president. On that, personally, I disagree with these guys. Because even in uh, the other time, the president was very clear. Where he said, Yeye na Raila wamekua wakiongea maneno ya kudevelop country ni nini, but they've never talked about politics. Na ye, he doesn't even know what goes on in Odia. And Raila also has also said very clearly that for them, elections are 2022 itakuja badai. But these guys feel the president is already betraying them. Number two is what I call the war on corru corruption. And if you ask me, it has been selective. This war on corruption has been targeting people alike to William Samuel Ruto. If you look at those who have been arrested and kicked out of office over corruption allegations, are mostly people allied to William Samuel Ruto. And most of these people are actually people who are sitting in some of the parastatals which, in my view, are normally used to raise campaign funds. And William Ruto with Uru Kenyatta, in their agreement, they strategically agreed to allow William Ruto to appoint those people to those specific places. But now they've been kicked out. You can, you, you can talk of Kenya Power and Lighting. You can talk of Kenya, Kenya Pipeline. You can talk of Kenya Post Authority. All those guys have been kicked out. So where else would William Samuel Ruto get... <laughs> Campaign money. Let's let's talk sense. And even the the the, the issues of Chacha Rambes, you know, it has been now been politicized to appear that the amount of money being being um, amount of money being raised in churches are actually proceeds of corruptions. And Kenyans are buying this to an extent that ODM party is now ex are now intending to move a motion in parliament to restrict that contribution. So that if you contribute more than 100,000, then you must explain to Kenyans the source of that money. So that war on corruption is actually another thing which is going to affect, which is going to lead to, to this falling apart. Because without corruption, let's just be real, without corruption, there's no way William Ruto can make such kind of money he's making. And without corruption, it means the, the, the people around William Ruto, like the MPs, who depends on hundreds from him, Will are now feeling offended, and they are not happy with the president. So war on corruption 
is another thing. And even these new currencies, many Kenyans believe that the new currencies are as a result of what they believe. William Ruto supporters, William Ruto has so much money outside there, which are not banked, and they want to restrict that. So in my view, the war on corruption is another thing which is likely to contribute to this beta divorce. Number three is open defiance. If you look at it critically, from the time the president read, read the riot act on uh, William Ruto's allies, they've been very defiant. In fact, most of them now are courageous enough to tell the president off. Alice Wahome, from Alice Wahome, from Waruguru, and I was listening to Alice Wahome and I was shocked. And you know the president, being the president, he will try to exert his authority on these people. And this defiance is going to explode. And most of them now will start rebelling. And that's what is going to lead to, to this divorce. So in my view, after this, uh, this, uh, this lecture by President Uru Kenyatta, the only thing which the deputy president should have done was to slow down his people. He should have told them, guys, let's relax a bit. But I think I'm a wachelia. So it's going to be very difficult for the president to trust these guys again. Because he had expected them to, he had expected them to heed to his advice, which they are now not doing. So they are defying. And this defiance, the end result is the divorce. Number four is the handshake politics. If there is something which is going to lead to the collapse of Jubilee, is the handshake between President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. And you all remember, after the handshake, William Ruto has never been a very happy man. William Ruto never approved the handshake, and he has openly opposed the handshake. William Ruto understand Raila Odinga kind of politics, and at the back of his mind, he knew so well that Raila Odinga was going to use this handshake to his advantage. And if you want to understand this, yesterday, Oscar Sudi, who is one of William Ruto's key advisors, made it openly clear that whenever William Ruto, I mean, whenever Uru Kenyatta is in Nyanza, he's very happy, relaxed. And whenever he's in a Jubilee stronghold, the president is always angry with everybody, agitated. And and Alice were home. And if you read if you read the the body language and the messages coming out of Jubilee leaders, they are blaming the handshake for problems facing Jubilee Party. So this handshake between President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga is going to lead to this. Just for the single reason that President Uru Kenyatta mobilized the Kalenji, the Kikuyus, around against one man, Raila Odinga. And uh, William Ruto also mobilized the Kalenjins against one man. Raila Odinga. So Jubilee Foundation was Raila Odinga. So without Raila Odinga as a target, then these guys find it very difficult now to play politics. And that's why they are very unhappy. Number five is the Building Bridges Initiative. That process is ongoing. The outcome, people still don't know. But in my view, I strongly believe that the main outcome of that Building Bridges Initiative, as much as the president is saying is a uh, it's all about the inclusivity, the, the, the inclusivity. In my view, I think it's about creating additional positions. The Prime Minister, the President, Deputy Prime Ministers, and the Deputy President. So that the country, the rest of the country can feel to be part of the government. So whether the, pres the President is interested in being the Prime Minister is something which is still not very clear. And William, I mean, and, uh, Sonko made a, a, some revelations yesterday. I mean, in, during the a, a Corino event, he asked the president to resign so that he can, his term can be extended. And those are some of the things which the BBI initiative were proposing. That we have a, a one term, a president serving for one term, but for seven years. And probably that's what William, I mean, that's what Sonko was trying to preempt. So the building bridges, because that process is is closely guarded between Raila Odinga and Uru Kenyatta, William Ruto is not in control of it. He doesn't know how it's going on. This week they are in uh, central Kenya. So that building bridges initiative is also what is creating suspicion within Jubilee leadership. And that's why the party is going to collapse. And lastly, is what I call post-President Uru Kenyatta's politics in central Kenya. The open defense we are seeing 
is because most of these leaders believe President Uru Kenyatta will not have a say after he exits political scene. And President Uru Kenyatta still believes that he can still control politics even if he resigns, if, if, he, if he exits the political scene. And that's where now this, this face off is likely to take place. And remember the Tim Keleweke. Tim Keleweke is coming out now very strongly in central Kenya. And the, the mere fact that the president hit out at Tim Tanga Tanga, these guys, I'm sure, in the next weekend, they are going to be re energized. And now they are in their message, because remember, all, all from all along, one thing has been very clear these guys have avoided hitting at the president. They've always used Rail Odinga. Anytime they want to hit at the president, they use Rail Odinga. So they say they had behind supporting the president and his deputy. And now the president was telling them first off on the face that men, you must now stop this. So the Tim Kileweke are going to have a field day in central Kenya. Because whatever they've been telling these people is what the president told them in their mother tongue. So in my view, those are the six reasons why the Jubilee Party is going to collapse. And that collapse is going to be messy, noisy, and we're going to have casualties. Thank you guys for watching. And to th for those who are bumping on this video for the first time, I want to ask you guys to subscribe because you'll always get something useful on this platform. So just hit the subscribe button. And after hitting the subscribe button, choose the bell button so that anytime you produce a video, then you get notified. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. And there's a gentleman from Zambia. He's called Jonjo somebody who just sent me a message that he bumped on my video and he likes it. So those kind of feedbacks is what we really like. And the best thing you can do, the only request I always ask people to do on this platform is to drop their comments below. Because the moment you drop your comments, then we can now start interactions. Then from those interactions, then we have more video ideas. So just drop your comments below what you think about this video. And if you like it, it doesn't cost anything to just click the thumbs up button. Thank you guys. And please enjoy your day. I'm actually going to work on another video, which I'm going to, to post later in the day. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.